please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Joe Bonamassa. So, hi, my name is Joe, and uh, these are kind of fun because uh, basically get kind of an insight in like what it goes on, you know, um, for, for at least for me, uh, on how to, uh, you know, basically how I set up my equipment, um, you know, the guitar I play. Um, I, I should just preface this whole thing. I mean, the, the elephant in the room is like, um, you know, I don't plan on ever breeding in my life. <laughs> and this Joe Bonamassa signature Les Paul is the closest thing I will ever have to a child. And when Gibson called me and said, you know, will you do a signature series guitar, I was like, I absolutely thought I was dreaming and I had to pinch myself and then had to call, you know, my management company and say, hey, is, that, is this actually really going to happen? And when they said it's going to happen and you're going to fly down to Nashville and you're going to design your own guitar in the custom shop, now that was tantamount to Charlie in the Chocolate Factory for a kid who grew up in a guitar shop. You're going, you can, you can basically design anything you want, you have a blank canvas. And um, the whole guitar, um, before we get into the, the meat and potatoes of it, came from um, it's called an Inspired By series, and the guitar that was inspired by um, was a guitar that my dad purchased at his guitar shop a long time ago, back when I was like 12. It was a 1955 Gibson Gold Top that somebody had really dropped and broke. It was it was broken many times, so they thought they were going to be clever and they paint the the back black because it's to hide the brake marks. And um, it had been routed for the Tunematic Bridge. It had the logo set down low and had Grovers on it, kidney Grovers, like the English style. And I think the English style Grovers actually make a, a difference in the sound of the guitar. And it was like, he paid like $1,200 for this guitar at a guitar show. And I would play it and play it and play it. And it was like my favorite Les Paul's, my favorite guitar. And because dad would go, all right, son, let me give you a lesson in life. You're 12 years old and you live in a house that has to you know, have light. And we grew up in upstate New York, so it has to have heat and running water and all the things that are staples in people's lives. And I said, okay, he goes, you know, consequently, um, I have to sell the guitar to keep the business running. And, I, and somebody had offered him like $1,800. And I was devastated when I got the call from Gibson. I was sitting at home here in California and I immediately went out to a very nice stationery store and I bought one of those leather bound books. And I still have the book. And I sat there for five hours, just remembering that guitar, writing every little detail that I could think of. And that was it. And when it came out, and I saw the first prototype in April, and I opened up the case, and I looked at it, and I was like going, I can't believe my guitar is back. How does it sound? I'm like, all right, good. So, to mind you, I play loud. And I make no apologies for it, but that's what the shield's for. Here it is. <laughs> You know, and, and that's the sound. I mean, to me, that Les Paul wraps it kind of like um, it, sound of a guitar in general. It could be any guitar. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be uh, a Les Paul. Or, uh, sound of any guitar is the sound of the tone wrapping itself around your ears. It can't be too strident. It can't be too, you know, bottom endy. I, I, I was just, you know, doing an interview about the guitar, and I happened to look at a setting on an amplifier that I was plugging into for demonstration, and they had the top and the bass rolled all the way on and the mid-range completely rolled off and it's like I look at those settings and I go that's the kind of thing you know like it's the frequencies that like whales and birds you know communicate in and it and it sounds like a vacuum cleaner to me and the whole thing about guitar is it's it's all in the mids and i.e. you know it showcases the mistakes a lot more but in reality if you can learn to play cleaner with more mid-range I think people will notice you're playing a little bit more. There's so many tonal variations and there's so many things that we could talk about, but on the guitar itself, the volume and, and the tone um, are, are critical for the sound. You know, it's like you don't have to, the volume doesn't have to be on 10, you know, and the tone doesn't have to be on 10. You, there's, you know, there's, there's so many variations in between 0 and 10 on all this, you know? <laughs> the English school, you know, where the... And 
like, you know, it's like it's that really warm kind of throaty guitar sound. Can I ask why you went with the uh, top wrap and the nylon saddles on the guitar? I went with the top wrap because I stole that idea from Jimmy Page and um, Billy Gibbons, and, and, it, and it allows you to play 11s and have it feel really slinky. Um, and the nylon sails, I discovered one thing by watching Farewell Cream and watching uh, Eric Clapton, looking at Eric Clapton's guy going, he's got nylon sails on that thing. And there's a reason, and I started experimenting with them. And it, what it is, it's, very, it's a very warm um, human voice quality. And it also tapers um, it, it, the difference between the low, the low wound strings and the, and the high unwound strings is very minimal. So you want a Les Paul to be even all the way through and have the bottom end stay true. So like, yeah. See how the bottom end kind of stays? It doesn't get clingy, you know, because then kind of, you know, really kind of zingy. So I'd like, beautiful adjective, right? Yeah. And my theory is always add, easier to add high end than it is to take it away. So that's, that's why I went with that. There's my Gibson inspired by Les Paul in a nutshell. <laughs>